Hi everyone. In this video, we'll see the steps involved in preparing the grid for docking and ultimately how to run the docking. So, in the last videos, we have prepared our macromolecule and our ligand, and we have saved the for the same in the PDBQT format. And the PDBQT format file, which we saved in the last uh, sessions, will be used here to prepare the grid. In order to input the PDBQT format file, you can either input it from here, read molecule. But if you select this read molecule from here, you can see all the files in the workspace folder, which is the PDB, PDBQT, all files. We can only use a PDBQT file for preparing the grid. So in order to do that, either you can select it from here or simply go to grid, <coughs> select macro molecule, open. Here you can see two macromolecules in the PDBQT format. One is a ligand and this is a protein. Select that, open. <coughs> it will ask you whether you want to preserve the charges uh, or add the charges. Just click no because you have already added the charges. Click no and click OK and contain. No, 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 no. Okay. So uh, this is a macromolecule. And we are going to prepare the grid for docking this macromolecule with the ligand. So in order to input the ligand, you can go to grid again. Again, you can go to grid, then um, uh, set map types, uh, choose ligand. Sorry, we, are, we didn't in, we input the ligand. You can go to ligand, input, open, and you can also input your ligand here. Now your ligand is here and your macromolecule is here. Now preparing the grid is actually a complicated process because the grid specifies the region where the ligand is to attack the protein or where the ligand is to dock with the protein. But uh, the area where the ligand is actually going to dock with the protein, if you don't know that, you should conduct a blind docking. Actually there are two different ways to identify the docking site. One is to search the paper from the PDB, open PDB and go to your desired protein and read the literature. Sometimes it may be explained in the literature where the ligand is going to attack the protein. Or you can conduct a blind docking. Blind docking means you are considering the entire protein molecule and you are uh, giving the uh, ligand complete freedom to attack wherever it wants. So by conducting this blind docking, it's possible for us to identify which area will the ligand attack. So in order to conduct a blind docking, blind docking, you have to go to grid and select this grid box. Okay. Now you can see a box here. This box specifies the area where the ligand is going to attack. If you keep the box here, then the ligand will be only choosing this area to attack the protein or the docking will be limited to this area. Uh, for doing blind docking, you have to select the entire protein. Or if you know the uh, exact position of uh, docking, you can select that area only. So in this video, we'll be conducting blind docking. So in order to blind dock, uh, blind dock the molecule, set the spacing in Armstrong to the maximum value of one. Usually if you are conducting uh, normal docking, we usually set it to approximately we can uh, right click on this uh, spacing bar right click here and uh, you can see the sensitive value to be one because i have set it one here because we are conducting blind docking for usual cases we usually set it to 0.5 but in this case we have to set it to one because we are conducting the blind docking if you set it to 0.5 if you set it to 0.5 the size of the uh, box will be much smaller so it will be useful if you, are, if you know the precise location of docking okay <clears throat> now we have um, uh, we have a box here and we have to cover the entire molecule to conduct blind docking so you can see there's a um, uh, for this cube there's a red part a green part and the blue part so if you want to move the box to the right, left or top or bottom or any direction, you can these you can use these three set of uh, tools. If you this this represents the red color represents the uh, red portion. So if I adjust it, you can see that the box is moving up and down. That means 
along the direction of the red surface and this represents green and this one blue but you can see that since the molecule or the protein is larger than the box simply moving this one surface of requirement because it won't cover the entire protein so in order to increase the size of this uh, grid box further you can use the three tools on the top uh, this red line indicates the size of the size in the red direction you can increase it and you can see the box becomes larger in the red direction and the next is the blue you can increase the size from uh, here like this and you can rotate to see that whether the molecules are all the protein molecules are inside you can see that the protein is completely not inside in this direction and this also the blue box is not so much so large enough so we can increase the size of the blue box by some extent okay i have it to 98 and now the red box completely oh, still there are some uh, molecule the uh, residues outside the red box we have to increase the size of the red box too and now uh, blue and red box are completely covered now we have to cover the green box okay now everything is covered completely the entire molecule is inside the grid box so this is how you do the blind docking how you prepare the grid for the blind docking uh, now we have to go to file close saving current close saving current now again go to grid grid box now you can see the previously fixed grid here go to file output grid dimension file so this is actually a .txt file you can save it as a grid .txt remember to give the file name file extension .txt here or else sometimes it won't read so always give file extensions give save and close it now the grid is prepared next step is to save the output go to grid output save gpf so here you can give any file name i am just giving one dot gpf that means my file name is one one dot gpf I have mentioned the file extension here save so the grid box is prepared now it's time to run the auto grid so then go to run run auto grid and here this is a very important topic because you have to set the program path name and parameter file name here the file name is already mentioned here with the proper extensions sometimes it will be only shown that file name is 1.gpf then it the autodoc will not be able to identify the file because you have to specify the path here and in the name in the case of uh, program path name it simply says auto grid in this case also we have to specify auto grid for in which folder of your drive so select browse in workspace you can see auto grid 4 these are the four files which we which we installed in this uh, workspace folder in the first video and uh, select this auto grid 4.exe the application open now it's okay and also even if you can see your uh, file name with the proper extensions just re-verify it by uh, clicking the browse button here 1.gpf open and the output log file it's a glg format file please note that the parameter input file is a dot gpf format file and the output file is dot glg format file and you can click launch you can see a uh, meter running here it will be gone when the once the grid parameter setting is complete so this is how we set a grid for a autodoc protein molecule and um, how uh, this is how we are preparing our macromolecule for docking this will take a while approximately one minute or nearly one minute something uh, in this case since we are doing this blind docking it will take some more time because the grid box is much larger or else if you are uh, doing a specific docking in any given uh, area like uh, sometimes if you know the given residue you can do it uh, so that the grid box will be prepared much faster because you are only scanning a small region 
uh, if you are doing, if you know the exact position where the molecule is uh, going to dock, you can select that area. For example, if uh, the molecule is going to dock at the 48 position valine or the leucine 49 position, you can just select uh, select these two region, and once you select here, it will be highlighted here. Then you can uh, simply prepare a grid. You can set a grid box, and you can decrease these dimensions because you know the exact area. So you can put it to 0.5, and uh, you can uh, decrease the size because you are only now specifically docking, so that you only need the given area this was the given area so you can adjust it like this you can uh, adjust it like this and uh, you can also you can still further decrease the size of your grid box because uh, you only have two residues to select that will be much easier okay so I'm not going to explain this here I just show you how to selectively dock or selectively prepare a grid document now we can see that uh, uh, the other window has gone that means our uh, grid preparation is complete in order to verify and uh, completely identify that the grid preparation is complete you can just go to your workspace and now we can see there are a lot more files here this dot map files are here there are a lot of dot map files and these dot map files are here because the grid preparation is completed okay now you can see uh, glg file here double click on the glg file open it and go to the last line you can see uh, computational software autodoc workspace autodoc successful completion and the cpu time was one minute and uh, nearly nine seconds this was the time required for completion of a auto grid preparation and also here we can see there are some maps prepared there are uh, many atoms in our molecule. Uh, then we can see there are some maps prepared here. And all these maps are uh, required for our autodoc to work. Okay. So in your workspace, if you can see all these kinds of dot map files, then it is assured that uh, the grid box is prepared. Now the next step is docking. After preparing the grid and running the GPF file, and when we obtain the glg file it's time for us to do a docking so in order to do the docking go to docking select macro molecule and here you have two options set a rigid file or a set flexible residue file name it depends upon your protein and your molecule that if your molecule is a rigid molecule then you can go with set rigid file name and if it's a flexible you can uh, if it's a flexible residue you can go with the second option usually if you are setting a rigid file name it will be much easier because there will be much lesser confirmations and if there are uh, no flexible residues but if your protein contains flexible residues then go with the second option so here i am going to set a rigid file name then select the file click ok now the protein is ready and now going to ligand we have our ligand open here so select from docking select ligand choose choose the ligand and select the ligand and these are the ligand parameters you don't want to edit anything there click accept again go to docking search parameters and select the first option genetic algorithm don't select the other option select genetic algorithm by default the number of grns is 10 the population size is 150 and the maximum number of evaluations is medium uh, if you are aiming for a good publication then it will be better for you to increase the number of grns to approximately 30 or 40 and also the maximum number of evaluations is medium here you can go for long but uh, please note that if you increase the number of grns and the maximum number of evaluations it will take much more time to compute the answer so I'll just keep it uh, number of evaluations of medium and the number of GRNs of 10. Then do you don't want to change any of the remaining parameters, then click accept. Now again, go to docking, docking parameters. You don't want to edit anything here. Just click accept, then docking, uh, output. 
in output you have to select the first option uh, Lamarckian output please note that you have already selected genetic algorithm in search parameters and do not select it here in output you have to select Lamarckian G genetic algorithm 4.2 click and give a file name I am giving a file name 1.tpf they will ask you on the uh, replay fit because there is only a file name named 1.tpf so I am just clicking yes and now it's, uh, we are ready to run our docking go to run project auto dock and here browse to get the right auto dock file uh, parameter file name it's simply 1.dpf you want to complete file name here so browse select 1.dpf and click launch it will take some time to complete uh, approximately 25 to 30 35 minutes depending upon the processor and once it is complete the dialog box will be out from the screen so we can get the result uh, we'll discuss it in the next video